We first reported this story last March, and tonight, an update on the bison that know no borders. Yellowstone National Park, home to the largest free-ranging herd of buffalo in North America. When snow blankets the high country, instinct forces this survivor of the Ice Age to head for the park's valleys and thermal waters. In typical winters, the bison can usually find enough food to stay alive until spring, but this season has been different. We've had a series of mild, very dry winters uh, and uh, summer drought, particularly this year. Uh, the Yellowstone River, for example, is uh, in the lower elevations, is at its lowest level recorded. So the, the moisture conditions were not good going into this growing season. Scarce food this winter may mean more bison than usual could head out of the park and north into Montana. But that state won't be throwing out the welcome mat. Many of the Yellowstone bison carry the Brucella abortus bacteria, or brucellosis, which can trigger miscarriages in both buffalo and cattle. About half of the bison have been exposed to brucellosis. Now that doesn't mean that they are infected. The big question is, what does that mean as far as in ability to infect animals? And the answer is, no one knows. What they do know is that any buffalo that stray from Yellowstone will be met by a patrol from the Montana Department of Livestock. We'll try to haze them back into the park. They'll also be closely monitored by members of the Buffalo Field Campaign, who don't especially like Montana's tactics. I think one thing that really bothers me more than anything else in the hazing process is that they come in here in winter, and winter is the time that most of the animals need to rest and relax, and they can't be exerting major energies and burning off their fat cells. And by bringing in helicopters, snowmobiles, ATVs, horses, it affects everything in the ecosystem. But there's a lot at stake for Montana and its billion dollar a year cattle industry. There's going to darn sure be an issue from an international trade perspective when the United States is brucellosis free and that hot bed of brucella is sitting in Yellowstone National Park. Somebody is going to suffer economically in international trade, world trade, if that disease is not eradicated out of Yellowstone National Park. When the Cattle came over here from Europe in the first place. They were the ones that gave brucellosis to all our wildlife. And now the tides have turned and the wildlife are supposedly giving it back to them. But if you want to solve a disease problem, you have to look at all the avenues that, that the disease exists in. Some animal researchers looking at all the avenues to cure brucellosis have discovered an important finding, a gene it triggers resistance or immunity to brucellosis in some bison. Another possible solution may come from the animal's past. The buffalo was the center of our life. It was our, our life's staff and uh, we evolved our lives around the buffalo. Local Native Americans have formed the Intertribal Bison Cooperative. They want to return the buffalo to tribal lands. They nourished us, they clothed us, and they sheltered us. And we, we depended on the buffalo who was very sacred to us and in our, our religions and in our daily lives. I think the ITBC, the Intertribal Bison Cooperative, could become an important factor in the Yellowstone solution. If, the, if we could get every agency and all the different uh, interested parties together and come to a table and work out a common sense solution based on biology and the needs of the public lands around the greater Yellowstone area. In late November, a bull bison that wandered out of the park was killed by government patrols. The bull had fought efforts to force it back to Yellowstone and cause damage at a nearby ranch. The death focuses on the delicate balance wildlife managers face, considering both politics and science to determine the future of the symbol of the American West in Yellowstone National Park. 
In 1996 and 97, nearly 1,100 bison were shot and killed after they roamed over the border, and that caused a national outcry and paved the way for the current hazing program we see today.